unboxing and review of the Locato loop station pedal. In the interest of transparency and honesty, they sent me this pedal to review. However, I don't have any connection with the company or anything, so I'll be completely honest. Right, let's get straight into it and do the unboxing. And this is the Amazon box it came in. And straight away, I'm not impressed with the way Amazon have packaged it, because this is obviously one of the fulfillment by Amazon boxes. If you look at the end, you can see the products there inside, and I'm absolutely amazed they're still there and they haven't fallen out. Okay, let's take everything out of the packaging and then we can see if it's all there and intact. And in fairness to the Amazon box, it's easy to get everything out. In the packaging here with the pedal is a Lucato Capo and some Plectrums. I'll look at these in another video, but this video is just about the pedal. And it's not damaged and it's there which is surprising considering the way it was packaged and the box it's in is really quite posh it's almost like one of these apple boxes where they've spent more on the box than the product don't get me wrong though i'm not criticizing this if you were buying this for a present for someone it looks really classy and above its price range or if you are buying this pedal for sort of infrequent use you've got somewhere where you can put the pedal back away safely and the box won't wear out in a couple of weeks. And the box is really nice quality. It's nicely designed with uh, Lakato written there on the front in uh, silver leaf. When I was editing this video and doing the voiceover, I thought, I wonder if I should have peeled those two bits of sellotape off. So I went back to the box and had a look. And you can peel them off, but it takes a bit of care because if you pull too fast you'll end up damaging the box and if you want to keep it stored in there you don't want the box to be damaged. Right, let's open it and take a look at what we get inside. And inside the box you can see first of all we've got the instructions and underneath the instructions the pedal's stored away quite safely underneath the USB lead. Right, let's unpack the pedal. And there it is. And my first impressions are, it's very heavy, and it feels like it's virtually all made of metal. I think the only plastic bit is that little plastic panel on the front. And this is all obviously good, because a pedal is designed to be stood on after all. Right, let's take a better look. On the right hand side, we have a jack plug socket and a USB plug. The jack plug socket, I assume this is the input, which is metal and very good quality. On the other side, we have uh, just one jack plug socket, which is the output. Again, it's the same thing, metal and good quality. On the top of the unit, we have a power supply plug, uh, which is a standard. And on the main unit itself on the front, we've got a good quality switch, uh, all metal, as you'd expect and we've got a left and right button or it's probably more likely an up and down and above that we've got a level knob which feels very positive and is made of aluminium so here's a warning in case you do the same something i didn't account for which i guess i should have was the fact that the pedal doesn't take batteries and it needs a power supply to be used so the power supply is a nine volt with a negative middle and a positive outside. DC, nine volts obviously. So I'm gonna to have to order one of those before I can use it. Right, now the power supply's here, we can try the pedal. If this is your first pedal, or you're new to the world of pedals, there's a basic speak that you get used to. And that is that the input is where your guitar is plugged into and the output goes to your amplifier, mixing desk, effects or whatever. If you have several pedals, you can link them, as in the output of one pedal goes to the input of the next pedal, and so on and so forth. Now, the markings on the pedal are quite subtle, and you've just got a little arrow on the top pointing inwards, 
and then another little arrow pointing outwards and this signifies which is the input and which is the output. Once you get used to this it's quite straightforward. So now we'll plug the pedal up and you see we plug the guitar into the input which is on the right side of the pedal and the output goes to my amplifier in this case which is on the left hand side of the pedal and then we plug the power supply into the top and it comes to life and it defaults to the first loop of 9 which is obviously number 1. The first thing I need to do is tune this guitar so I'll access the tuner function and to do this I press the left arrow and the right arrow at the same time and the pedal becomes a tuner. Unfortunately, as with most plug-in tuners, when you put it into tuner mode, the guitar is turned off, so you can't really hear the guitar very well. But I can reassure you, it tunes it up very nicely. And how we know when it's in tune is, the blue LED is in tune, and the red LEDs to the left-hand side means that the guitar is flat. And if you had red LEDs to the right-hand side, it means the guitar's sharp. And obviously, the more red LEDs are lit up, the sharper the guitar is, or the flatter the guitar is. I'll just do a final check. And you can see from the final check, it's done a good job, and that guitar is certainly acceptably in tune. And once you're done, to get out of tuner mode, you simply click on the foot switch. In the instructions, there's a full list of what happens when you click on the foot switch. You'll notice that there's one set of instructions for without recorded data and another set of instructions for with recorded data. When you've got no recorded data, you just see the number on the screen of the pedal. However, when you've got recorded data, you'll have a ring of LEDs running around it. Right, let's record some data. I'm just using the very basic chords from Knocking on Heaven's Door here, and that's a G, a D, and a C. That's not a bad loop, uh, but the quality of the loop is down to my timing and not the pedal. Okay, to stop it, we have to double click on the button. Let me show you that again. Right, let's have a play with that loop, and I'll play around with Guns N' Roses solo from their version of Knocking On Heaven's Door. A really useful device for practicing and improving your playing. You know, you could sit here and go round that solo until you mastered it. Uh, it does what it's supposed to do. Let's try putting another layer on. So you press it twice, once to play, second time to record. That sounds quite a good loop and you could go on and on with that and improve it and make the loop uh, really quite sexy if you wanted to. Ideally I should have changed the sound for the second recording but it'll do for a test. It's worth me pointing out just because I was testing the looper I put it in the wrong order so the guitar is going straight into the looper and then out to my effects. What that means is if I decide to change the sound on my guitar I'll also change the sound on the loop, like this. You can see there that the loop sound is being blasted through my distortion unit, uh, which doesn't sound particularly nice. 
The solution to this is very easy and what you actually do is you put the looper in after the effects. So the guitar goes into your effects then out of your effects into the looper, out of the looper into the amp and then what you'll be able to do is record on one set of effects and then change the effects for the next recording and so on and so forth so it'll sound more interesting. So to demonstrate this we'll go on to the second memory bank and you'll notice we now just get a 2 without the ring of LEDs meaning that the bank is empty. <laughs> That first loop is just a simple three chord finger picking pattern with a bit of phaser on to demonstrate the effect. And it's looping really nicely isn't it? Right, I'll add another layer with distortion on it to give it some power. Just have to play with these levels slightly so it doesn't overpower the first loop. Ok, that's better. So now I'm just going to improvise over that. Right, I'll just use the level control to bring up the level of the actual loop. I've put a really heavy distortion on this so it gives me good sustain but it also allows me to demonstrate that you can keep changing the sound without it affecting the original loop. If you're learning the guitar it's a really great way to practice or to try writing your own music. And if you're already playing on stage well you don't need me to tell you the possibilities it opens up. Right the next thing I want to do is check the USB function. To do this I'll plug one end of the provided lead into the loop pedal and the other end into the USB on my computer. And my computer's detected the pedal straight away and the pedal has a U on it. At this point it's been powered by the USB as well. My computer's showing it as being a looper with a speaker icon. And then if we double click on this it opens it up as a mass storage device. And if we access it you can see each of the banks is saved as a WAV file. So I'm assuming it will go from 1 to 9 eventually. To test it I'm going to save a backing track in a WAV format and also a short drum loop and then we'll try to play them with the pedal. I'm renaming the backing track as 3 and I'm renaming the drum loop as 4 and hopefully we can play these tracks through the pedal selecting bank 3 and 4. Right, to test this I've ejected it from the computer and I've connected it back up to my guitar and amp. So let's see what gets played. You'll remember I loaded a backing tape into track 3. So we'll try that first, see if it works and see what it sounds like. Well, that's working fine, and you can see how this would be useful. You could even use it live on stage if you had to, if you played along with backings. So you could store nine backings on this, and then just by a click of a button, they start. A word of warning though, this wouldn't work on all devices, or at least not very well. This is going through a mixing desk and into studio speakers, which by nature are fairly hi-fi. So something like a backing track, will sound quite good through it. However, by very nature, a guitar amp is lo-fi and therefore you might find the sound quality a bit dodgy. 
They're not really designed as a backing player, but as they offer the facility of dropping WAV files onto them, I thought I'd try. And the results are really good, and the sound quality is excellent. This backing track goes on for eight and a half minutes, which is a really good test of the pedal. However, it's really boring for you guys to listen to. So we'll go on to the one I saved into bank four, which was a four bar drum pattern. I'd say that's another success because it sounds really good and it loops really well. And something I haven't tried is to actually overdub onto a file that was created outside the pedal. So let's check it can do that. And that's another success, as it's overdubbed the original drum loop really well. And that's obviously automatically saved to the pedal, so you can use that whenever you want to improvise. For anyone who's liked the sound of the lead work played over these loops, you can find out how to do it in my short course on modes. And you'll find that on my channel in the playlists, and it's the modes or the modal scales. Also, you can find it on www.ebooksforguitar.com. And there, it's just completely free. You don't even have to leave an email. It's just that it's in order there, so it's easier to go through. So, to summarise the review of this pedal, it's excellent. It's solidly built. Uh, in the making of this video, I used it for quite a few hours. I left it on solidly, didn't get hot. Uh, it produces good sound quality. It does everything that it claims to do. And I was looking for something to criticise it on, and I couldn't find anything. It, it is good. Remember though, these pedals do come with no power supply, so you have to get that separately. So bear that in mind when you buy it, because you need to take the extra costs into account. I've put a link in the description to the pedal on Amazon, and there you'll find the up-to-date price in case you're thinking of buying one. If you enjoyed this review and want to see more, or you'd like to see some guitar lessons, please like and subscribe to the channel, and then you'll see when I upload new videos. I've also got a link to the website down below in the description and various other bits so it's worth you looking down there. Thank you very much for watching.